You know, when it comes to most clinical trials today, there's a very evident lack of diversity. In fact, nearly 80% of the trials are made up of white participants. Participants from underrepresented and underserved groups in clinical research, Hispanics, Latinos, Black, African, LGBTQIA, they really should all be included and encouraged to participate. Absolutely, and today we're learning more from Stacey Hargraves, Vice President Head of Portfolio Delivery Operations at Jensen Research and Development LLC. She also currently serves as the executive sponsor for Jensen's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in Clinical Trials program. So happy to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here today. For sure. I appreciate the opportunity just to talk about clinical trials. Absolutely. Well, let's, so let's, let's start with the basics. Yes. Let's explain what are clinical trials and why are they so important. Clinical trials are clinical research studies designed by physicians and researchers to understand the drug that drug product that we intend to use and to treat with patients. It's very important that we understand the phases of clinical trials. There's a lot of information out there um, and that the process that people follow to participate in the clinical trials starts at phase one, it goes all the way from phase four. Phase one early studies, healthy human volunteer, small subset, could be as small as just five to 10 people. Larger phase three and phase four studies um, could be 10 or 20 or 30, 40,000 people. Wow. So there's a lot of exposure in the clinical trial process. A lot of people think it's not safe, they might be a guinea pig, um, but there's a process. It's safe, it's effective, that we're checking the efficacy, and it's a regulated process. People don't, it's a highly regulated process. The FDA governs the entire process, and there's measures in place if something should happen that we would have need to stop a clinical trial, that we would need to intend to treat someone, et cetera. And and there's a reason why that that full process is in place to make sure that we're essentially putting a drug product out there. That's right, and you're taking care of the well-being of that human being, which Correct. is so important. Um, and Stacey, it's not just a few clinical trials. I mean, there are so many occurring right now in this country and abroad. Indeed, you're correct, Olga, in the sense that, you know, really the story here is about the statistics. There's 400,000 clinical trials registered wow. globally. My goodness. If you think about it in the U.S., 80,000 of those clinical trials are conducted in the U.S. 2.3 million people participate in clinical trials. But the story here is, like you said initially, that 80% of those are white participants. So how can we change that paradigm where we're educating all people all people of color and races about the clinical trial process. That's something that we've anchored in at Janssen and we're committed to by our research include me efforts. There seems to be a lot of skepticism though still today about clinical trials. Can you clear up some of the misconceptions? Well, she mentioned the first one, which is a guinea pig. Yeah, right? sure. Indeed. That's a big Indeed. one. And listen, I, I, say, I think there's a story here, right? There's a long history around clinical trials. I think we've heard about Tuskegee, we've heard about Henrietta Lacks, and where patients were not treated um, effectively and they were not treated fairly and but that process has changed over the years you know in the last 20 30 years where we've really shifted and put those safeguards in place that you see today so it's a safe process it's regulated and really it i think it changes the paradigm of how people will think about clinical trials once they understand We're doing this for 20 plus years in the clinical research perspective is just the education piece and it's important to meet folks where they are, hear their voices, and, and, and help them understand that it's for their future, right? Exactly, and so we've had a mobile unit, right, um, at Janssen, where we've gone in the community, and like you said, we hear their voices. What do they have to say? What concerns them about the process? And how can we educate them and bring them into, into what this clinical trial process needs to look like? Clinical trials not, might, may not be for everybody, but it might be for somebody. And for that somebody, we wanna make sure that you're educated, or someone's educated about what they need to do. Speak a little bit more about this mobile unit because this is something you started during the pandemic. It's kind of like literally taking the message to the streets. Indeed. And really we say meeting them where they are. Where they are is locally. And so we went to South Florida during the pandemic. We're again just talking about the clinical trial process. We hope to take this across the U.S. And again, taking the voices and the information that we hear and really anchoring into the clinical trial process at Janssen. At Janssen, we have three initiatives that we're very, very proud of. One of them is our Race to Health Equity, where we've committed $100 million to address health disparity mm -hmm. and health equity across the United States. And we recently visited South Carolina and uh, we followed kind of like that effort and the mobile unit. Let's take a look. A lot of folks don't know that uh, clinical trials are available. A lot of people think that they have to be recruited for them. They're not sure of necessarily everything going on involving it, a lot of uncertainty, and it's been great to just be able to connect with them, answer some questions, and help them understand. 
I think knowledge is power. So the more information I could gather and take home and share with them, the more I can kind of help my family stay healthy. I learned that there's a lot of information out here for people that are looking for the information. And I also learned about the Find Me, where I can go and find clinical information. You know, it's important, uh, especially in these times with COVID, also with just getting older, uh, that you have to come out and really uh, take advantage of all the medical uh, opportunities that we have. And what the research community is just going in and participating so that we can have the medicines that we need, have the testing and the clinical trials that we need, and seeing be able to, you know, get checks. One of the first events we did, we met a lady and explained things to her, and then we ended up coming across her again a month or two later. And she came back, uh, back to us and was very excited to tell us that she's been involved with a uh, clinical trial and also she continually checks the website to see if there's more clinical trials available in her area. Well, I came out here to get screenings to see which ones I haven't had. Like I'm really into my health care, but I don't know a lot about it, you know? So just kind of trying to be aware. A lot of folks think that, you know, one, a lot of these clinical trials might not be designed with them in mind. They think, you know, might be early on in the development. A big thing that we do is we just want to talk with them and be understanding and see where they're coming from and so that we can also best explain it to them. You know, the importance of having the diversity involved in clinical trials is to make sure that it is good for everybody. You know, it it makes a difference. It's really powerful, even in the Hispanic community as well. I mean, the perception has to change because I lived it with my brother who was in a clinical trial, end of life circumstances. The intent here with Research Includes Me is to really understand the benefits, and there are wide benefits, right, across all therapeutic area. It could be retinal, it could be dermatology, it could be cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. There's a wide scope that we're talking here, and really that's our effort and our desire at Janssen, and if, if anyone has questions or what they would like to know about clinical trials, they can go to researchincludesme.com. Researchincludesme.com. I like that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here and being a part of the show today. Thank you so much. Great sure, stuff. absolutely. And of course, if you want more information, you can always go to our website, thebouncingact.com. We'll be back right after this. That's right. People need to get involved with these clinical Indeed. trials. Indeed.